but let's start today's session please wait two minutes i'll start immediately yes let's start today's session so in the last session we were discuss about a basic introduction of python okay so what is python and why python we were discuss and also how to or what type of programming language it is we discuss so this is completely python programming language course and in this course i'm going to cover <laughs> core python as well as advanced python and core python means very basics and fundamentals like operators data types control flow statements and functions modules and data structures complete data structures these all concepts under comes into core python and when it comes to advanced python object oriented programming features like encapsulation polymorphism inheritance abstraction and even then uh, different types of variables in object oriented programming and different types of methods in object oriented programming and also we'll cover in advanced concept like exception handling multi threading programming file handling and regular expressions python database connectivity decorators generators and pandas matplotlib numpy and so many concepts are there in advanced python so yesterday it was the first session and today is the second session in the last session we just discuss what is python and what type of programming language it is so i'll give you 5 minutes brief discussion yesterday what i discuss so after that we'll continue today's session as i said that python is a programming language but what type of programming language it is general purpose programming language so the meaning of general purpose is using python programming language we can develop general applications like many applications for example desktop applications web applications database kind of applications network programming gaming applications statistical analysis applications data analysis applications and so on so that's what we use python for any way that means any applications we can implement using python script and python is high level programming language i said so what does it mean high level so that means if it is a high level programming language as a programmer we need not to write any explicit code for maintaining low level activities like memory management and security just because it is high level it will take care all security and memory implementation internally next python is dynamically typed programming language i said dynamically typed means while declaring variable in python you need not to specify any data type generally in any language like c c++ java c sharp net if you want to declare a variable you have to go for like this the common syntax variable name and any data type the reason is it's a dynamically typed programming language dynamic means what run time during the program execution based on your value data type of this variable will decide so you need not to specify any data type like this if you give int a equals to 10 in python programming script so it will give syntax error according to python syntax this is wrong declaration only you can declare variable and assign value to the variable based on the value data type will decide for your variable that is called dynamically typed and these are all statically typed 
statically typed means at the time of variable declaration you should give data type of that variable usually in c c++ other languages at the time of declaring the variable only we should decide the data type of this variable based on its value only so but in python just focus on your value what you want to assign them and based on the value data type will decide for a variable later if you want to know what type of variable data type then you just mention type function type is a built-in function this function is used to get data type of your variable so this is type of a and coming to this next python is interpreted programming language so interpreted programming language means line by line code will check and execute so explicitly as a programmer you need not to compile a program so compilation will takes place internally by interpreter and when it comes to compilation programs like c c++ and c sharp.net so whole program at a time it will check how many number of lines you have written no matter then total program total lines will check at once and next in interpreter like python is interpreted programming language so line by line code will check and execute so every time each and every line separately will test and if it is correct it will execute in case if any line of code is showing some error then immediately python interpreter will stop the execution and it will show you the error message and you have to rectify that error then we can proceed into next lines only so this is interpreter programming language line by line code will check and execute and finally python is case sensitive programming language so in python programming how the way you declare variable names and function names and class names same way you have to access but if you try to access in different cases it won't accept suppose i declare variable in lower case like employee id 123 if i try to access this employee id in the upper case it won't accept because you define the name is lower case you have to access into lower case only so this is called case sensitive okay so ultimately python is a general purpose high level dynamically typed interpreted and case sensitive programming language okay so next uh, python was designed and developed by guido van rosam he is the man who invented python actually here guido van rosam so the first version of python was available in the year of 1991 so the version number is 0 0.9.0 in the year of 1991 i can say that okay so officially python was available to the public in the year of 1991 so the official date of birth of python is feb 20th 1991 this is the officially available publicly uh, python that is feb 20th 1991 only this is the first version later there was several versions are there one point text two point text three point text right now the current stable version is three point 10.4 only and there are a lot of subversions are there 1.123 and so on 2.123 and so on like 3.0123 and so on we are in 3.10.4 only now okay so this is actually python's current stable version to know the versions list i recommend to visit this python.org here so when we go through this website we'll be able to find many versions here so look at here python.org this is the current stable version here you can click on downloads and you can see this is current stable version 3.104 and if you want to get the more versions list you can scroll down so you'll get more versions information which version you want to download you can click on that version so you can able to download it and python software foundation programmers they have stopped the a support for python 1 version and python 0.9.0 version so that's 
here we will look into only two versions onwards <clears throat> two version and after two version only we will get this uh, download options <clears throat> because python software foundations people were so stop the st support for python one version clearly here there is no one version you are looking here only lot of sub versions are available so you can see many sub versions are available but main versions are one and two and three this is we are in third version right now but every one month or two months after you may find different version number in the official website because they is to keep on update the version numbers and adding more extra features here and even in our session what new things are available in 3.10.4 will be discussed in later okay yes so to download and install <coughs> python software i just want to click on this download 3.10.4 so now you can see we got this python 3.10.4 is available once it's available now you can see you have to install it but actually in my computer so already python software is there so to know in your computer what version you have or else whether you are having python software or not how to check simply go to command prompt and type python space iphon iphon version okay and you'll come to know that which version is available 3.10.4 is available here so this is the current stable version but right now i have already python software so that's what i'll try to uninstall from my computer the reason is you have to know that how to install python software from the beginning so for that purpose i'm trying to uninstall python software which is already available in my computer to uninstall just flip to control panel and there you can click on uninstall programs and just check out python software where it is available let's try to uninstall immediately from my computer so that i can able to show you how to install python software and strictly remember all of you no matter what editor you are going to use for writing your python script but make sure that first and foremost important you should give to installation of python so i am trying to uninstall let it be uninstall progress after some time you can see this uninstalled successfully done so i'll be back again let it be uninstall it is okay and most important thing is once again i'm telling you what editor you are going to use later either like pycharm editor or visual studio code or jupiter or spider or atom or netbeans eclipse my eclipse notepad notepad plus plus sublime text editor edit plus any editor you can use for writing python script but make sure that before that you must and should do python software installation when we install python software initially then you will get by default core libraries of python that core libraries are very important to develop any kind of application so first you have to do you have to install python software must it is after that you can able to go through any software editor to write python script this is must and some students will think that so i need only pycharm so directly they'll try to install pycharm so the main core libraries will not come over there so before that you have to install python software in your computer then after that you can make setup of any other editor to write python script continuously okay yes so still in my computer right now uninstall is progress let it be uninstall i don't want wait for that so let me include some basic features of python meanwhile so i'm trying to discuss about features of python so what are the important and basic features are available let me discuss first feature number one is python is simple and easy to learn okay yes python programs are very simple and it's easy to understand python syntaxes are very simple and straightforward compared to other existing programming languages there is no complex syntax at all so python syntaxes are very simple and when compared with other languages we can write 
Python programs with very less number of lines. So in Python, more readability and simplicity of programming styles are available. So next feature is Python is completely free and open source. Yes, free means to download and install Python software. You need not to get any license and you need not to pay anything. So it's freely available in the official website python.org. It's completely free and open source. And the source code of Python is completely open to all. You can download or you can get the source code from official website and you can use that source code into your application implementation. Next, coming to this third feature, Python is completely cross platform or platform independent we can say that platform independent independent means what once we write python program it can run on any platform without rewriting again and again suppose if i write code in windows operating system through then later i can shift that code into other platforms like unix linux and so on so it supports any operating system you can able to write internally pvm that means python virtual mission will take responsible to convert that python source code into mission understandable code so it is clearly converting possible with any operating system point of view and python programs are portable in nature so portability is possible portability means what you know it's very simple <clears throat> suppose I have a Python script which was written using Windows operating system. So Python programs are portable. That means we can migrate from one platform to another platform very easily. So even though when we migrate from one platform to another platform, then Python programs will provide same result on any platform. There is no changes in the result. So accurate result you will get. So this is portability in nature. And coming to this, Python is having a great feature called dynamically typed language. Already I explained this. So that means in Python, we are not required to declare type of variables. Whenever we assign the value based on the value, data type will be allocated automatically. So that is called dynamically typed language. And next coming to this, Python is having extensible feature extensible means what we are not required to uh, sorry we are going to use other language programs in python so that is called extension extension means for example i want to write a code in c and that's this c standard code can be shipped into python for that we have to use some flavors like c python for c programmers purpose j python for java programmers purpose iron python for dotnet programmer purpose that flavors if we use then we can use that dotnet and java c language c plus plus language code into you can extend into python also that means we can use already existing legacy non-python code into python so that easily we can able to shift the code from one language to another language and next another important feature is python is having huge standard libraries yes sir huge standard libraries because of this libraries only so python became a popular language nowadays the reason is if you take any sort of application when we go through python python will provide that kind of application related modules and packages and libraries will be available so for example I'm a network programmer. I need to implement some network logic. Okay, so to network logic purpose, Python will provide network libraries. You can import directly and you can able to extend your logic. For example, I am a test engineer. So I need to test, I need to write some test cases for automation. So Python provide testing modules and testing libraries also. Or else to develop a gaming applications, Python will provide gaming libraries. No matter what sort of application you are trying to implement, that type of application libraries by default 
will provide by Python. That's what the reason Python became a popular language nowadays. Anywhere we can use Python script. Okay, so these are the basic and important features. Let's flip to our installation process. And now you can see in my computer, uninstalled was successfully done. And along with this uninstallation process, I need to uninstall one more thing. This is Python launcher. So it's related to Python Software Foundation and just uninstall it also. And now my computer don't have any Python software. So I'm ready to install now. So just why I'm doing uninstallation means just for showing you how to download and install. Already I have download just now Python software, which is available in my download folder. Look at here. I'm just opening download folder and there you can able to find Python executable file Python 3.10.4. But before installation, let me check in my computer right now Python still available or not. So how do I check? Simply go to command prompt, command prompt and you can type the command called Python and iPhone iPhone version. So previously it shows me Python 3.10.4. But at this moment, you can see there is no Python. Python was not found. That means we have uninstalled just now. So there is no Python software available right now. Let's try to install it again to install. So you have to download it. I have just now downloaded. Go to download folder. Simply double click on 3.10.4. Nothing to do here. And once you double click on this executable file of Python, it will ask you to run you can hit this run button then immediately it will show you your window this is install python 3.10.4 window make sure that and i recommend to click on install now but make sure that before this click on install now you must and should activate this checkbox so what is this checkbox this is called adding python environment variable to your operating system so that your operating system can recognize Python commands and Python files, it will provide runtime environment. And if you don't activate this checkbox, in case if you forgot to activate this checkbox, later manually also we can add Python environment variable. Okay, so better to activate this checkbox. After that, click on simply install now. That's all. You just wait for one minute and your Python installation successfully done. So making setup of Python software pretty simple and it is maximum five minutes time it will take including PyCharm editor. But this is Python installation software. Please try to install from your side also. Be ready with practical things. So I'll wait for one minute here. Setup progress right now. And meanwhile, I'll discuss something here. So Python is Python was designed and developed by Guido Van Rosam. He's the man who invented Python. I said no. You can see this. He's the author who developed Python programming language. And the name Python was selected from TV show. So when he started script of his programming language, there was a TV show, the TV show name called the Complete Monty Python Circus Show which was broadcasted in BBC. So that's what the author uh, was selected a name called Python from TV show. He has given working title of his programming language like Python only. And while developing Python, the author completely maximum features are derived from C language or C++, Perl script and cell script. So functional programming features from C, object oriented programming features from c++ and scripting language features from Perl script and cell script all the features was derived from existing languages for python development okay so this is very small story here and coming to this our setup and it's almost ready to install and complete installation and once after installation process there is a default editor will be available for your practice as soon as when we install Python software and one default editor available, that default editor name is called IDLE, Integrated Development Learning Environment. This is IDLE software. 
and even if you can practice all the python uh, related stuff using this ideally also so but i will not recommend in the initial stage of uh, practice with python programs ideally so we have to use proper editor so proper editor means i'm going to use continuously pycharm editor here so complete my lectures like core python advanced python every concepts i'll cover through pycharm editor only and if you don't want to use pycharm editor next option i can suggest you visual studio code or vs code is the better option apart from pycharm editor okay but better to use pycharm editor clearly here now you can see setup was successfully installed means we have ready with python software and let me check again whether you installed successfully python software or not just now when we pass the command in the command prompt there was python was not found displayed now this time i installed successfully to check the version of python python space hyphen hyphen version we got our version back python 3.10.4 as i said that when we download and install python software by default one editor will come that is called integrated development learning environment so how to open this ideally software after successful installation of python simply go to search type ideally so once you type in a search box ideally you will be able to prompt that is ideally python so as soon as when we hit this ideally then you will be able to get a interactive shell or interactive window this is interactive window actually so in this interactive window so they are having so many commands like help command copyright information credits or license information like this so if you want to read the license information type license like this command is there license command it's a method when we hit this enter button then complete history of the software okay history of the software python was created in the early 90s by guido van rosem so at some so and so research institute so so much of information you can read it here if you want okay so let me exit this and let me close this and generally the interactive window is allowed to write a basic script of python and if you want to continue that interactive window you can continue but before that opening interactive window i want to tell you what are the basic ways to write python script and execute so there are different ways to write python script and execute i'm going to tell you each and every way different ways to write python script to write python code and execute so what are the basic and different ways to write python script and execute point number 1 or option number 1 using interactive window using interactive mode or interactive window next option is using script mode and option number 3 is using python ideally using python ideally option number 3 option number 4 is using pycharm editor or any other editor visual studio code or atom or any other editor you can use many editors are there but i'll show you first all these three options but in my upcoming sessions i will never follow any one of these options just for your idea i'm covering these all options to execute but once i started to write python script into this pycharm editor our sessions completely continue with pycharm editor only okay so let's go for interactive window so what is interactive window and how to write code in this interactive window interactive window is nothing but that's when we install python software you will get ideally software you can open ideally this is called interactive window in this window you just type your script of python suppose hello i am by typing within the single quotes and when, as soon as when we hit the enter button so we got the output and even a value 10 i am printing and if you want to print a then simply type a and hit the enter button a is printing output is come so this is interactive window look at here a value 10 and then b value 20 and i want to add two numbers simply a plus b so how it is simple compared to other languages 
to add two numbers in other languages you need to write plenty of code it's like class creation and open brackets close brackets main method creation declaring the variables data types so much code you have to write but in python no need to write anything so even then you can see whenever i declare variable did i include any data type before a no the reason is in python this type of declaration is not possible immediately you will get syntax error because i just given the clear information python is dynamically typed language so no need to specify any data type only focus on your value and print your value and if you want to know data type of your variable then type of a you can use type of a means integer type if your value is for example 12 123.4 and if you want to print type a is printed here type of a is what type it is float type so python will decide internally data type of your variable based on the value only like this you can keep on type the code and interact with this window and execute your code this is option number one to write python script in interactive window in this interactive window you need not to save your total script anywhere with the .py extension you just usually you can interact with the window by typing your script and keep on press enter button so your output will be displayed and option number two is there using script mode script mode in the sense what you should ready with your script what script python script so that means you have to finish your complete script of python and after that you must and should save your script file with a .py extension and then you can able to run whenever it is required so let me write a small script mode file so to write script mode and i'm just opening right now notepad window this is a plain text editor in this notepad window i'm writing code here just welcome to durga soft it's very simple and i'm going to save this file how to save this file click on file menu and click on save it and now coming to this i'm saving in my desktop and how i'm saving the file name is compulsory required like test.py extension is required so i'm using test.py into desktop and let me click on save it so your file is ready to uh, ready available for execution so where it is available in your desktop look at this your test.py is there this file is called script file you have already written python script and you have saved with .py extension and this script file how to run it there are two options again to run this script file option number one you can go to command prompt and choose the proper location cd space desktop cd means change directory then hit the enter button you can able to move to desktop after that moving into desktop your file is located on desktop so you have to execute that file so to execute this you have to pass command python your file name is test.py then enter so you got output here welcome to durga soft here and even you can type py space test.py then run it so again same output is coming so this is the way to execute your program your script file how to run through command prompt or else if you want to run your same script file using ideally software you can also run this go to ideally and when we go to ideally by default you will get uh what is this uh, interactive window and in this interactive window i don't want to write any script i need to open my existing file to open an existing file go to file and you can see open option is there open and choose the file where you have saved yes i have saved in my desktop and i need to select the file name equal test.py and click on open it and what you have written that is opening now so once you hit the run button and run module in python every dot py file act as a module so that's what it's saying run module or else you can hit f5 button from your keyboard and it will run this now you can see welcome to durga software it's executing so this is option number two is completed next option number three instead of writing a separate script file using notepad 
why don't we go directly ideally there only we can write your uh, script file separately generating and after generating separate file you can save it and run it over there so everything in one location we can do that is ideally location let's flip to ideally software now so ideally and i'm not going to write any script file separately i want to prepare a new file here in the ideal itself go to file menu click on new file and it will ask you to prepare new file a value 10 b value 10 t and let me go for c equals to a plus b then after i want to print c value here okay c equals to a plus b then print result is result is comma c value this is my script and you must and should save this script so control s after that you have to save on desktop or any location again i'm saving my desktop file test1.py and press enter so it's ready to execute after saving so how to run this go to run menu run module now you can see result is 30 is coming so these are the options are available to write python script and execute one is using interactive window next one is script mode next one is ideally next one is pycharm editor so final one pycharm editor so i want to show you how to download and install this pycharm editor so when we download and install python software only python software will be download and install but you will not get pycharm editor pycharm is separate editor this editor you have to download it and install it properly actually right now at this moment i have pycharm editor in my computer look at here pycharm editor is there this i want to uninstall okay let's try to uninstall quickly because you will also come to know how to install pycharm editor so that it will be easy for you to make setup so let's go to control panel quickly and i'm trying to download uh, uninstall pycharm editor from my computer again i will reinstall so that you will understand how to make setup of pycharm so pycharm community edition uninstall it and say yes it's ready to uninstall wait for two minutes for installation so that i will show you clear steps how to download pycharm editor and how to install it i'll show you quickly so that it will be easy for you to install pycharm editor in your computer once you are ready with your setup and it will be easily uh, what we can say uh, to write python script and all okay yes let it be installed so what someone is asking so extensible means what you know we can write your script in c language c format or c++ format or java format or dotnet format that code we can able to extend into python only that is extensible for that you have to use c c c python flavor c programmers will use c python flavor java programmers will use java python flavor j python like this dotnet programmers will use j python flavor so using that flavors once you write your python script into their respective languages that code we can able to extend with python that is called extensibility so that means already available code we can able to use into your python script now uninstallation is completely successful now pycharm is not available here let's try to download and install pycharm editor to download and install pycharm editor simply go to google and type download pycharm here so once we hit this first link download pycharm now you can see there is an official website www.jetbrains.com so pycharm editor completely designed and developed by jetbrains community so you can click on download pycharm link here and there is two options are available sir one is download pycharm professional version as well as community version professional means for both scientific and web application development with html javascript and sql support and when this is i recommend after learning python 
when we go through Django or REST API or any UI technologies, for them, I recommend professional editor. Even I used to teach many batches of Django, so REST API, UI technologies. So for that, I'm using this professional editor in my computer already there, but it is 30 day trial available. Okay, if you are the student or faculty member, and you need to prepare your JetBrains account with your mail ID and password, proper uh, ID proof if you upload, then they will provide one year license free of cost, this professional editor also. But we are talking about purely Python development, core and advanced. For that, professional editor is not required. So community editor is, editor is quite enough. So I recommend to download this for future, future for pure Python development purpose. You can see free built on open source. Click on this download link so that you will get community editor download option. So it will take minimum two minutes of time for downloading. Once downloading successfully, then I'll show you simple steps to install this Python software. Okay, yes. No problem, Mr. So this video also obviously upload in our Durgasaf YouTube channel, so you can watch it by tomorrow morning. They'll upload this video. So for every batch of every faculty, five to four to five videos they'll upload. Okay. So those who joined late, no worries at all. The same recording video after enroll of this session, like four or five days after, you will receive. At the same time, if you want to watch this video, so please visit Durgasaf official YouTube channel. And even yesterday session also, they were uploaded on YouTube. So how to watch, just simply go to YouTube and search in YouTube, Turgasaf. And you can see search Turgasaf here, Turgasaf. After that, you can able to watch this Turgasaf solution, official YouTube channel, and there is a videos click on this videos recent videos and recent videos they have uploaded in this my video also there you can see python demo one so 13 hours ago they were uploaded and similarly you will they will upload this video recording also by tomorrow morning so you can watch this those who miss this session no problem at all okay so this is case no so link will not be changed every time sir this link will work up to this friday only before friday you have to decide whether you want to join these sessions or not okay then after up to friday or saturday you have to enroll for this course every day you can join on this link only okay up to saturday including friday excluding saturday so on for saturday i will provide a new link for only enrolled students those who willing to join so that is and after that next time onwards once your enrollment is finished then we will provide a short link from our side that link will continuously work for 15 days for every 15 days the link will be changed training is over no that won't will have that will not happen i think so training is still it is process no how it will show training is over how to enroll for this course means yes our team is contacting you know so yesterday i think you got a mail from our team durga soft official actually so you can revert back them and even they will call you and even if you want to enroll for this course i'm dropping the contact number in whatsapp uh, in our chat group so you can try to call to this uh, uh, number i just dropped this contact number you can see okay and no this is give me one second Yes, I have dropped the contact number in chat box. You can collect it. And now you can see I have uninstalled successfully PyCharmator. Even I have downloaded also. So let's go to download folder and let me show you how to install PyCharm editor. So this is PyCharm community 2022.1.2. This is the latest version. Double click on simply here. Once you double click on installation process is very simple. This is PyCharm Community Editor and hit the run button and it will ask you 
simply next 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 install it so within two minutes of time your pycharm editor will be ready in this pycharm editor you have to prepare one project with proper name in that project you can add any number of python files okay so this is pycharm installation process say yes then it will open a new window here click on next and click on next and activate the all check boxes this is creating shortcut key for desktop upgrade projects folders dot pv extension all check boxes you can activate and click on next and click on install so wait for one minute within one minute your pycharm editor also ready so from now onwards any topic which i'm going to discuss which is related to core python advanced python all topics explanation with coding all these things i'll go through pycharm editor only so just wait one minute once it installation complete then we'll start programming using pycharm editor and after successful installation you must and should create a new project in pycharm editor project means a collection of multiple python files yeah it is completely free just now i explained you know co uh, community version is completely free okay so one month after you should pay means that is uh, what actually professional editor even one month after also you need not to pay for professional editor once you are the student or trainer or faculty member you can you can create jetbrains account and you can upload a proper id card then they will allow you to use that one year free that is professional editor but community version no need to pay anything it's completely free and even entire the thing if you want to use free of cost so better to go for visual studio code also that will also fine but after few sessions complete i will arrange you one session how to handle your python script with visual studio code that will also fine so it uh, visual studio code and pycharm editor almost its proper editors graphically fully equipped editors so it's completely clearly you can able to design and write the code easily so now coming to this almost installation is complete just for five minutes you can wait so that i'll show you how to prepare project and how to write a basic script using pycharm so that from tomorrow onwards we'll continue with pycharm editor only or topic wise obviously pycharm pycharm or visual studio code because this pycharm is exclusively designed for python that's what i personally recommend this pycharm editor so almost done i request you please ready with this software setup today itself yeah i can go with visual studio also why not so almost same the concept will not be changed no so coding style everything will be same but only the where you can write the editor tool is different it's obviously easy after few sessions i'll explain you the visual studio code also how to set up that is is also easy no issues and you can see after completing pycharm community editor setup it will ask you reboot now or you want to reboot later you can decide i am just i want to reboot later you can finish how to link the path path is not required here already i have set that uh, activation of checkbox now automatically path completely done if you want me to do manually then i'll show you no problem now pycharm is ready <coughs> after pycharm ready then you can go to search and type pycharm community edition this is community edition once i click on this pycharm community edition then immediately it will ask you to create new project or open project 
So I want to create a new project for your batch. So once I create a new project, in this case, I'll use continuously that project only. It's opening PyCharm Community Editor. And some small setup also required. If you want to do any uh, background theme changes or font size changes, I'll show you. Now you can say welcome to PyCharm. To create a new project, you can able to create new project. To open a project, you can click on this project. And I'm selecting this new project option. And after that, you can choose a right path where you want to save your project properly. But I don't recommend to save your project in C drive especially because it's hard thing to find later whenever you want to open project because there is many paths are there. And that's what I'm clicking on this folder icon. In this folder icon, I'm choosing the drive called F drive I'm choosing. So in your computer, you can choose any drive. Let's click on OK. After choosing F drive, my project name, I'm giving Python project, Python project at 9 p.m. It's my project name from now onwards, Python project at 9 p.m. After that, you just click on create. So once you click on create button, then it will take few seconds to create a project and for this project to create a virtual environment. So what is virtual environment means it virtual environment is a isolation environment. That means it is a separate environment will create for your project. It will execute your project files separately without making disturb other projects isolation environments. So separate environment is creating for your project by default. So let's create this all. It takes few seconds. Once it is ready, then you can start writing your script here. Now, once it's ready, so now you can see, sir, you will get a default file that is .py file that is what main.py this is the main.py but the appearance is completely dark background color is there if you want to change appearance i'll show you how to change appearance even though the font font size is very small and you want increase you can increase first i'll show you how to change background color background theme so to change the theme of background color you can go to file menu of pycharm editor and click on settings option once you click on settings option in the left hand side appearance and behavior there is appearance option is by default it's selected and there is a theme option is there in this theme drop down list you can select windows 10 light or intellij light any one light theme you can select windows 10 light i'm selecting for clear visibility my background of theme is like white color and even though if you want to change font size in the left hand side panel there is an editor option is there you can expand editor option and in this editor option you can select the font and you can change the font size here right now 13 is there if you want any size you can change i'm changing 20 size and click on okay now this time you can see the editor is look like white background color theme and with font size is what 20 only so clear visibility purpose i took this size and by default, whenever we create a project, Python project with 9 a.m., I created this name, and one file will be available that is called main.py. So if you want to run main.py directly, you can run it. But already in the main.py, some script has written. So this is the function in Python, def indicates function definition. And function name is print underscore high. And the function is having parameter name. And function is printing the logic formatted string high and the name also. But where we are calling the function, here we are calling the function. This function expects the name parameter. We are supplying PyCharm. So when we run this while calling this function, name is PyCharm. So it will print high PyCharm like this only. Okay. 
let's run this main.py to run this main.py file default file you can go to run menu on top of the pycharm editor click on run main once i hit this run main in this console window or output window you can see high pycharm will be displayed here now you can see high pycharm is displayed so this is the default file you just ignore this file no matter it is and we will concentrate our own files creation how to add our own test uh, our own py files into this project to add or to create more files into this project so you can go to project and right click on the project name python project at 9 am go to new option and choose either file or python file what is the difference between this file and this file this file you can select this is a text file while giving the name you must and should give .py extension and if you choose this file and no need to give any .py extension because you are already choosing python file only so let's click on python file give the name of the file test and no need to give any .py press enter button test.py is created in this test.py i'm just trying to write some code look at here the advantage is whenever i try to write some print function automatically the intellisense option is coming print so you can hit the enter button you can capture it from there so welcome i am writing here so to execute this test.py you can see this go to run menu and you have run main only there but run test is not there to run test file go to run and below here one more run option is there you can click this run and immediately it will ask you in this project so many files are there which file you want to execute select this test and you can see your test file is executed and or else every time you need not to go to run menu and run option like this only okay simply so many tabs will be prepared when we create a new files and every tab will be prepared separately which file you want to run on the tab you can right click on it and simply run test only this is what simply execution of pycharm editor here okay so more options i'll discuss in tomorrow session this editor settings and all and tomorrow onwards we'll continue this pycharm editor through only so everything we can able to handle in one location in this pycharm editor prepare the file edit the file save the file execute the file if any errors errors also will be available in the error window clearly all things we can manage at one location this is pycharm editor okay so that's all from today my side if you have any questions you can feel free to ask me now and those who are new to this session please i recommend watch my first recorded video which was available in our youtube channel just now how to open youtube channel how to enter into that i have shown so you can watch the first video and anyway you are attending second video this is fine those who are new to this session okay <clears throat> and session uh, timing is fixed 9 pm to 10 pm every day night and uh, every session after you will receive the same recorded video to your google drive and along with soft copy of material okay yes so if you are getting invalid interpreter means already you have installed pycharm editor previously so that's what that interpreter is not coming so you have to configure interpreter properly so in your case on the right hand side up uh, interpreter changes it will be there you can click on that link and you can set the interpreter properly okay yes any question from your side hello yeah tell me sir so for uh, core and advanced we are okay with pycharm for communication right tell me come again uh, for core and advanced uh, we are okay with pycharm communication operator yes obviously even uh, even core and advanced completely pycharm editor only okay in case some students are asking uh, pycharm uh, we have two options up there right Ah, core and advanced community option is enough. 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 No, no, no. My question is, in Python, we have two options. One is uh, one month trial, and second one is uh, 
for community of community. First one is professional editor, which I recommend to you uh, for uh, uh, that is uh, Dijango, Restape, all those things we can able to work on professional editor. And for one right. and advanced Python, only uh, community edition is required. Okay. And the community is uh, free, right? Completely free and uh, no need to uh, purchase and no need to make license. It will not expire also until and unless you okay. delete that uh, your editor. And professional is completely uh, 30 days trial version only. And that also we can able to extend up to one year. But only the thing is you should create JetBrains account from your side and they will ask you some id proof if you are faculty member or student then if you okay. upload id proof they will allow you to access one year time okay Thank you. yeah mr mohammed uh, you have 3.9.7 means you can do it immediately upgrade or else uninstall and reinstall it is automatically update that will be better That's simple, no? It is one minute matter. That is, yeah. Sir, can you show how to fix the interpreter issue? What what issue you are having interpreter issue? Actually, the problem is actually even they have my previous projects, no? So let me show you the interpreter issues. What is the set? Your Python project nine a nine pm is that this is new project. Let me open. A new project which is already implemented look at here i'm opening my old project python suppose python full stack or something whatever it is i'm just dealing with offline batches also let me go for my other project so let's look into this python full stack for example if i open this one you can see this is the problem interpreter updation problem even you can go to a project and expand this and some files are there now you can see this is the problem you can see now it, python interpreter configured for this project it is saying because recently i have installed a new version and also that interpreter is different that interface is different just now i told you virtual environment will create for every project so to do this you can see this configure python interpreter you have to click on this link and interpreter settings you have to click on this and after interpreter settings immediately you will be able to open this window and you can expand this python interpreter and show all interpreters and i'm selecting this python 3.10 python project 9 a 9 pm interpreter and click on ok and immediately it's updated okay now this time interpreter is setting no error this you can do it Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, so, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Tell me, tell me. Sir, my, uh, our best duration is 45 to 50 days, right? 45 days to 55 days. Uh, 10 days right? maximum. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, in this, we will cover all the things uh, regarding poor and everything. And obviously, I cover. Why not? Yeah. If you don't look at anything, you can join uh, your uh, next desk in the same tell thing me. or not. I'm not getting, tell me. Actually, if we are not uh, covering or understanding anything, I can go and advance. We will join your desk in the same thing or it is possible. See, I'm not hearing properly your voice. What you're asking, tell me properly now. So I am going to cover yeah. core and advanced Python completely within this uh, 45 days to 55 days. I'm saying 55 working days, not even including Sunday. Got my point? Okay. Working days. Yeah, working days. That I'll cover. Uh, tell me if I not cover what you are saying. If we uh, not covering anything, we will join Ah, okay 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 if you are not understanding or else if you are missing so many sessions will you able to join to your next batches yes you can able to attend my any batches at any time at any number of times without pay fee again okay i will okay. allow you okay thank you and not only you many students like this they will do so if they are having some 
uh, job work or something they will uh, join into next upcoming batches and they'll repeat the sessions also like that that's possibility is there no issues once you are my students okay. undoubtedly you can able to join at any time without asking me also you just ask the link and i'll provide you can join at any time okay sir like see you tomorrow at same time on same link have a nice time